PC prices have now launched on foottrading.co.uk. You guys asked for them, we have given them to you. Over 660 PC prices for special cards, gold cards, all that sort of stuff over on foottrading.co.uk. A tier one subscription which includes silvers, icons and special cards for Xbox and PS is £10 a month. And a tier two subscription is live filters. We have the buying and selling prices for nearly 1,300 special cards. 300 icons and every single profitable uh, silver card filter on this game. For tier two, you also get access to the live filters feature, which is one of our most popular, and my trade storage, which is a custom built storage platform for you guys to store the trades you've made and see your profit in real time. So check out foottrading.co.uk. But for now, let's get into the video. Yo, what is up, guys? Welcome to a new video with me, Fastball40. As always, if you're new around here, please do consider subscribing down below, clicking the like button, all that good stuff. The next goal for this channel really is 15,000 subs, and we're well on the way to that. So if you want to get involved, please do click that subscribe button. You get training videos, you get my new World of Glory that we're doing towards the end of this game, all that good stuff, loads of different types of content. Um, and as always, if you want to watch me do this stuff live, click the link down below and come over to Twitch. That is where I live stream every single day. We have a really good amount of fun over there. You see loads of packs being opened, trading happening, all that awesome stuff. So make sure you get involved. Uh, but this is episode two of Let's Talk FIFA. It's a video that I'm bringing out once a week to talk about what's happened in the last week on the game. And um, last week was very negative and a lot of, there's been a lot of reason for it to be negative because in my opinion this year's FIFA, as I've said before, just hasn't been good enough. I don't think I'm alone in thinking that. Most people think it. However, this week's all the launch of Summer Heat and we're going to start off with a negative first because we're going to get that out of the way. But Summer Heat for me so far has been sensational. Absolutely superb. It has been brilliant. We're going to talk in detail about it and more about what we, want, we should be seeing and what we want to see come FIFA 21 based upon this promo. But the first thing we are going to talk about, like immediately, is the no loss glitch. It's still here, our disconnect glitch, whatever you want to call it. This is L Eds. Now, L Eds is a top 100 FIFA player most weeks, very rarely doesn't get 29 and 1 or 30 and 0, every now and then maybe 28 and 2. Um, but he's someone that I know very well, very honest player. And again, this week he had two more DCs, which denied him um, a, his victory. Now, we know EA have put in a new server. We know they've done that, and that is in Dallas. And I think they put one in London as well now, which is good for me, because I live in England. Um, but, I've, I've said this before, I'll say it again very briefly. You can put as much good content on this game as you want. If the game doesn't do what the game's supposed to do, which is legitimately to play the actual football itself, and doesn't do it effectively, then you have a massive problem. And it still hasn't been acknowledged by EA yet. It's been acknowledged indirectly, because they've said... We're putting new servers in, gameplay responsiveness, like responsiveness, all that sort of stuff. And that's all good. But I didn't play Weekend League this week because for the last two weeks, I've had five and four DCs respectively in games that I was winning. And that denied me Elite both weeks. So I hit Elite, I think, four weeks before that. Um, I'd hit Elite. And then this happens and I'm like, well, do you know what? What is the point? Legitimately, what is the point? And that's why I didn't play for uh, Foot Champs this week. And I probably won't play it next week unless it's on the road to glory. We are on the road to glory today. The one in coin total was completely different. This is the Road to Glory. I'm not showing you too much of the Road to Glory. Purely because there's something that happened on the Road to Glory. I want to show you it in the next video. That will be back tomorrow. Um, but that's the major issue for this week for me. It remains an issue and it isn't good enough that we're still waiting for it to be fixed. You can have all the like all the um, great content you want. If the, the key factor of the game, which is the gameplay, doesn't work you have a massive problem and they need to fix this by FIFA 21. They need to find a way to stop this from happening for FIFA 21. But that's really, for me, the only major negative completely out of the way. Let's talk about Summer Heat. All right, guys. So, Summer Heat, for me, has been absolutely sensational. Now, now we'll get the elephant out of the room first. Luka Jovic won the vote over Kent. Now, everyone's sounding really surprised by this. And the reason why I wasn't was, number one on my streams, a lot of people said to me, I'm picking Jovic, I'm picking Jovic, I'm picking Jovic. So I was like, okay, cool. That's quite a few people. But Ryan Kent was the other guy. And you fall one of two ways with Ryan Kent. Either you love him or you hate him. Now, I didn't do him when he came out because I didn't see a point. And I don't really think he's that hard to deal with when I play against him. I think he's a good player, but he's no different than any other five-star weak foot striker in the game, realistically. But you fall one of the two ways. Now, I went for Jovic because I'm doing a road to glory and I've got Mendy at left back. So why not? Why would I not want a five-star weak foot striker and Jovic that I can do? But that's the thing that everyone was sort of angry about, but it is what it is. It was a vote. I don't really believe that EA turned around and were like, well, hey, let's just rig the vote. I, I don't think that happened. I know some of you will disagree and you're entitled to, but that was just my opinion. What I want to talk about, though, is the requirements of these SBCs. So Ivan Perisic, a four-star, five-star player, 
for an 85 rated team with a top card, team of the week or team of the week moments. Now, the team of the week moment stuff is irrelevant because you're probably going to put either a top or a team of the week for all the special cards in packs right now. You're probably going to put one in the team. But if you look at this card, utterly sensational. And this is what the end of the game should be about. Giving people cards like this, relatively cheap, so they can just play them, grind the game out, have fun, which is great. Uh, Jovic, I think it's an 84 and 86. A bit more pricey than the other ones they brought out, but still, in my opinion, relatively good value. If this came out a month, two months ago, we'd be going mental about how great a value it was. And I don't think that's too bad. I don't think... Does Luka Jovic have a expiry date? <clears throat> no, so Jovic hasn't got an expiry date at all. Perisic has got four days on it, but Jovic has no expiry date. So for an 84 and an 86, I've got no problem with that. Uh, we also got Ndombele. I think he might be gone now. If I'm not mistaken, he's gone. If we go to the players, I'm pretty sure. Or oh, was he there for the end of the game? I think he was there for the end of the game, actually. Let me just flick through. Uh, but Ndombele was two 84 squads, and he got done on, the, on this Serbo to Glory. Again, absolutely brilliant value. How many tabs have we got here now? My God. No, he's not, well, I don't know where he is, but... Either ways, Ndombele, 284 squads was nothing for him. But what is better about all of this at the moment is purely the fact that I, this is all grindable. Now, if you've watched my video yet about it, you'll see how you can grind a lot of these players for free, especially how you can grind what we'll talk about in a second, which is the Prime Icon for free. But you'll see all that sort of stuff that, that, that's there, and it's just brilliant content. The 82 to 88, it's seven, seven gold and um, four bronze you put into that team. And the 81 plus is just a rare team for 281 for an 81 plus now. So you can do the 82 to 88, get crappy 82s, put them in that. You can do these bronze upgrades. They even bought the bronze and silver upgrades in for 36 days, which is, again, absolutely brilliant. You can grind out bronze packs into silver. I'm going to be doing all this to grind to an icon, grind towards Jovic, all those cards that I want. But you can do those, convert them to the two rare golds, put the golds into that. There's loads of ways you can grind this game at the moment. A lot of people are like, yeah, but just trade and things like that. It's nonsense. Don't, don't always, don't fall into a trap of either or. You can do all these things. You can trade on this game. You can grind the menus. But for me, it's been brilliant. It's been so good. These SBCs each day have been relatively good. The one sticking point I have at this point in the game, why are we still getting untradeable rewards? There's no justifiable reason for untradeable rewards in my, in my opinion. And I have a horrible feeling it's what EA are leading to for FIFA 21. Potentially, marquee matchups is untradeable. League SBCs is untradeable, so let's say they do bring back Icon SBCs, I think that would be caveated with League SBCs being untradeable, so you can't quite grind the game in the same way. I, I do, I hope to God that is not the case. I really do hope that's not the case, but I have a horrible feeling that it is. And I think that would be a very dark road to go down, and a very problematic road to go down, but it is what it is. We can't do anything about it at the moment. The only thing I would say again, flip side of that again, playing Devil's Advocate here, is this is a 75 rated squad not that difficult to do realistically for a 25k pack and i think they every day they've given us a two rare gold players pack and done the same thing here yeah and a two rare gold players pack which isn't too bad the moments guarantee that came out yesterday again will be done on the road to glory this is an 84 rated squad if i'm not mistaken 84 rated squad 70 chem not terrible probably a little bit more expensive than it needs to be with a 70 chem but relatively solid uh, and then the prime icon upgrade this is brilliant content now i know people are like oh by this point, we should have the moments, X, Y, Z, but just a standard 88 rated squad for this Prime Icon. Now, there's two things you need to think about with this Prime Icon. The first of those things is that it's grindable for free. You can grind this for free. It's not, it's not clickbait to say it's free. It is free. You can grind this card. So that's the first thing to think about here. Second thing is, yes, it is a coin sink, but it's a, it's a fun coin sink. No one is made to do it. It's not overpriced, in my opinion. I think it comes in at just under 300k. There are a few icons that are under 300k, but as you guys would have seen from the video that I brought out, we literally have packed, for, for people in the community, we've packed Pele, we've packed myself, Maradona, we have packed um, Vieira, and we've packed George Best from it, we've packed some other good icons along the way. This is brilliant, and this is what the game should be about all the time, is being able to go and grind those, the, the, the game. EA should want people on the game grinding it. It shouldn't just be about making money, because inherently, if you make a fun game a game that's fair, a game that people like playing, people will spend money on that game. Even if it is on FIFA points or whatever it's going to be they're spending money on, people are more inclined to do so because you're giving them something back in return. It's not good enough to just go, right, here's a promo with loads of sick cards. There you go. That, that, that's not good enough. You need more in this game. You need that, and EA need to realise they've got to start matching the likes of Warzone and Fortnite and those sort of games that give you grindable content but I'm not going to hark on about what's happened so far this year. I've spoken about it enough times. But what we're looking at right now, it is brilliant, brilliant content. And it goes further than that. 
It does go further than that, and it goes to squad battles. Not squad battles. Uh, wrong one. We'll deal with that in a second. We'll get out of that. It goes to objectives. I went to squad battles, so I saw it. It goes to the objectives. And firstly, Mendy, in my opinion, I saw, I see certain content creators, I'm not going to name them, that complain and cry when there's no grindable content on the game. They get grindable content and they still complain and cry. And I can't be asked for that. I, I can't bother. This card for free is brilliant. You haven't got to do the whole thing. I'm at the 85 at the moment. I plan on getting the 86 and the 87, sorry, 87 and then the 89. I want to grind for 93 if I can. This week especially, I'm going to be heavy on the road to glory um, doing stuff. So you guys will see all this sort of stuff. But it, for me, that's brilliant. This Kessie card, squad battles, squad battles, if you want those. You can do them on rivals, but squad battles, squad battles. Then score 10 goals in rivals using Serie A players. Fine, no problem there. And then score an assist in six separate rivals wins. There's nothing wrong with this card at all. And it's free. It costs you absolutely nothing. Just your time. And it's, it's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. My caveat to this. This should happen every single month in FIFA. They should bring out a card that is grindable, even if it's even more difficult than this, that you've got 30 days to get. It gives you a reason to be on the game. So let's say, for example, beginning of FIFA, they bring out a relatively meta midfielder for the Premier League or something. I don't know exactly what they're going to do. Or you get a choice of Premier League, Liga, and all the major leagues. You get a choice of a midfielder from all of those by competing the set objectives. You can choose the one you're going to do, and that's the one player you get. At the end, you get the player pick with the one that you want. That, to me, is brilliant. And that's something we should have every single month on this game. It's not good enough just to say, Spain put money on this game. You need to give back EA. But, but if, it, if this is a sign of things to come, I am absolutely enthralled with it. I think it's brilliant. It's more what you want to see on the game, without a doubt. But it has to be within reason. I'm not expecting EA to go and pump a 93 Mendy when the game first come out. People are ridiculous when they suggest that that's what we should be looking at. But, but I'm, I'm all over it. And it does make this game fun towards the end of the game right now. You've got a lot of special cards and packs You've got a lot of stuff to do in this game right now. So for me, it's very, very good. I've seen the numbers on Twitch pick up in terms of people playing the game. Um, does it make up for TOTS? Especially the ending of TOTS? No, it doesn't. I still think questions need to be asked of Foot Economist, of that content team, of EA in general. Questions still need to be asked of them because it doesn't make up for the shambles. And in my opinion, what was disgusting last week when they baited, 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 waited to rinse everyone's cubs out and then brought it out in the hopes that it would mean people had to spend FIFA points to get the stuff in their cup to do the ultimate tots. It doesn't make up for that at all, but it's, it's a step in the right direction, 100%. What I would say right now is look out for all those people in EA that suddenly start to talk and become engaging with the community because the new game's coming out. But just be mindful that, that there's a reason for that. There is a reason for that. The final thing I want to talk about is EA's engagement. I'm going to get into that. I'll be right back. All right, guys, so we are looking at Corey Andreas' uh, Twitter um, at the moment. This is his Twitter that he used to use as a community manager at EA, doesn't do whatever it is. Now, I am blocked on this account. I have never added, replied, or spoken to him in any way, shape, or form on Twitter that I can remember. Never have spoken to him. I, I honestly cannot remember doing it at any point. In fact, I'm nigh on 100% certain I never have done. So I can only assume that I am blocked because, like many other content creators and other people, because I have criticised him in general, whether that's through videos, whether that is through uh, my streams and things like that. I have never gone as far as someone perhaps like Kurt, when Kurt went really hard on it. I understand Kurt's frustration, but Kurt went quite hard. I've never ever done that. It's never been something that I've done. I've always just been like, I don't think they're fit for the job. That's my opinion. I'm entitled to it. I don't think Corey, for example. Zaro different. I, I, I genuinely believe Zaro cares. Even Foot Economist to a degree. I think Foot Economist maybe, I don't know if he's been applied pressure to make more money for the game or whatever, but... Jamie probably does care about the community to a degree. Zara, I genuinely believe, does care. I genuinely believe his heart's in the right place or his has been. I think his execution's been off, but I think he cares. Corey, in my opinion, doesn't and never has done. The way in which he's spoken to the community, the way in which he's acted since this sort of whole thing blew up on Twitter, it says everything you need to know. But this is Corey Andreas and he's blocked me and I don't know why, but it is what it is. I don't really care, but that's that. It's a shame, but hey-ho. But this is a sort of endemic of the lack of engagement that we get as a community, with this game compared to other games. Now, this week saw EA Play came out, okay? So EA Play, so everyone in the UK and Europe stayed up to midnight, one o'clock in the morning, because we were told, check out the latest on FIFA at EA Play. So we were like, boom, let's go watch it, brilliant. And then game after game after game after game after game came out, Star Wars getting a 15-minute cinematic experience, despite the fact it's coming out at the same time as FIFA. What did FIFA get? FIFA got a half an hour, a half, a 30-second 
video mixed in with Madden where we didn't even see if Mbappe scored the penalty. That's what we got. Is that good enough? Hell no. Nowhere near. One thing that you need to understand about FIFA is it underpins pretty much most of EA's game library. The money that FIFA makes allows EA to bring out titles, all these other titles, and pay for the rights to them and the development of them. Ultimate Team does that in a nutshell. It is by far the most profitable game. I looked somewhere the other day and I think I saw that 60% of EA's revenue plus comes from Ultimate Team. Yet we get mugged off, and we do get mugged off, by the fact that EA do not want to turn around and give us any details. We're told we've got to wait till August. Details in the summer, but most of it coming in August. Why is that? Give me one justifiable reason why, as a community that underpins your whole organisation, we don't get given treatment at bare minimum equal to other games, but in the long run, preferential to other games. Because if you don't keep us happy, you're in trouble, realistically. Because if anything changes in this game that brings the, the funding down, loads of EA's games and titles that they want to bring out ain't happening. It's as simple as that. It's a fact. It's not an opinion, it's a fact. And so this here is endemic of EA's arrogance and self-importance that they think that they can just go, do you know what? We're going to block people. We're going to ignore you. We're going to do what we want. I've spoken about it before, the direct communication that doesn't really directly communicate anything. And for me, that, that is, is the major thing that has to change next year. People can handle issues in the game if we're being updated. Twitch went down the other day and every couple of hours they were updating what they were doing, what they'd found, what was going on. Because the Twitch weren't scared to say there's, a, there's an issue here. They were like, there is an issue here, but we're fixing it. So we understood. People couldn't go lie. People might be frustrated, but we understood. And this is something that EA have to work on. EA have to come to a place where they start engaging with the community again. And they might not like what they hear. No, I'm not a, fa I'm, I'm not a fan of abusing people. I'm a fan, if you want to critique people, no problem. I've critiqued for economists this year and been like, you've been quiet all year, bro. Why are you suddenly popping up now when you get a bit of, cre like, a bit of credit? Suddenly, well, hey, I'm here again. And you're entitled to do that. I don't agree with name calling or threatening and things like that at all. It's not something that I agree with or will ever agree, agree with. But you have a right to voice your opinion. If you can do it in a relatively constructive way, you can't be expected to always be like, oh, that's okay. You can be a bit like, I'm peed off with this, but hey ho. And this is the major thing. Engagement, engagement, engagement. If they don't do that, yeah, onto a fall for next year because I think people are fed up. Content creators are fed up. You've seen game changers much more outspoken than they've ever been. Way more outspoken than they've ever been. Game changers not playing the game and playing GTA. I'm not going to go into too much detail about names because it's not on me to talk about them. But it's something to be mindful of and it needs to happen. Even when things are good as they are right now with sensational content on this game, we're still seeing what is a relative lack of engagement and that needs to change very, very quickly, in my opinion. However, on the whole, at the moment, I am a massive fan of the content. It is fun, it is engaging, it is grindable. It's exactly what I want to see on this game continually. As a content creator, I want to be able to show you guys packs being opened. I want to show you guys the grind. I want to show you all this sort of stuff. So the more of it, the better. The better it is for EA in the long term, because we're telling people, hey, this game's great, go and buy it, go and play it. People indefinitely spend FIFA points, or undoubtedly spend FIFA points, if the game's worth doing it on. Um, but for me, other than the, the usual critiques that we've still got for EA, because I still haven't quite got that right, this is a massive step forward. It's a huge step forward. So I'm, I'm a fan, and I, I will give EA a round of applause this week. A round of applause for EA this week. I'm, I'm a big fan of it, and I think it's been very, very good. And I hope long may it continue for the rest of summer to give us something to do on this game, especially seeing as the game has been pushed back to the beginning of October. It's not miles away. It's only a couple of um, a weeks. I think back in the day, it used to come out in October anyway. It ain't that deep. We understand why. Again, it'd be good if they did turn around and say, we're pushing the game back because of COVID-19. The season's ending later. I think we can all get on board with that and understand that. I think it'd be good if they said it, but I think we all know why it is. But that is going to be the end of the video, lads. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, Road to Glory returns tomorrow. Make sure you check it out. Lots going to be happening on this account in that time. Um, but yeah, that is going to be the end of the video. Peace out. I'll speak to you soon.